Welcome to Sustainably Speaking. I'm Mia Quinn. Today, we're Sustainably Speaking with Soydan Ozjan, a senior scientist at Oak Ridge National Lab, which is operated by the U.S. Department of Energy. In this episode, we'll explore how Oak Ridge is using industry partnerships to create solutions for hard to recycle products at the end of their useful lives, like old vehicles. Vehicles pose a challenge for recycling because in addition to other materials like steel, they're made of durable plastics and composite materials. And those are crucial in manufacturing because they're lightweight and durable, allowing low carbon energy solutions like electric vehicles and wind turbines to exist. But finding a sustainable solution for how to recycle an old car will further our journey toward a circular future for all products. Also joining me today is my colleague, Gina Oliver. Gina is the Senior Director of Durable Markets at the ACC. Join us as we explore how Oak Ridge is teaming up with ACC to develop new ways to prevent these materials from going to waste. My name is Soydan Özcan. Uh, I'm a senior material scientist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. My job is, uh, is to develop technology for the features of sustainable manufacturing and transfer the technology to industry. And I also uh, train, educate and mentor junior scientists in sustainability. Oak Ridge National Laboratory, one of the 17 uh, Department of Energy Laboratory. We have over 5,000 uh, people works here, scientists from different backgrounds. Some of us focused on uh, basic energy science, some of us focused on applied energy science. So Oak Ridge National Lab is uh, focusing on national challenges in terms of in many different areas, including sustainability. I came to Oak Ridge uh, 2008, and it's been almost 14 years now. And Oak Ridge National Laboratory is a, one of the unique places that there is an opportunity to have a bigger impact in society. So I have been uh, working in Oak Ridge in sustainability, but I had a chance and opportunity to work in many different areas. So working Oak Ridge is uh, working together with the worldwide experts together in a very challenging uh, programs, projects. Uh, it's been a, it's been a very uh, rewarding for me. soydan has been with Oak Ridge for over a decade and has witnessed how attitudes towards sustainability have shifted in science, engineering, and manufacturing. Even his own perspective on his work has evolved over the years, and he sees great opportunities in the future. There is definitely a huge uh, opportunity for future. I've not been trained too long ago, but early 2000s uh, during my PhD, the way that I trained is how the material performed. What I looked is the strength of the material, stiffness of the material, or conductivity of the material in terms of electrical or thermal. However, in my PhD or my undergrad or my researcher time, I haven't even looked at the, what should be the life cycle of this material. I haven't looked at the recyclability. I haven't looked at uh, how it's going to be impacted the environment, biodegradable or not. So there is an opportunity to develop a set of new materials, new products, new manufacturing techniques to shape the future. And it, it's really engaging. I'm, it's engaging for me, I'm sure, with my what I see from a young generation. They are very much engaged. It's a it's a good place to be. There's a lot of opportunities to make the world, world better than today. Composites are an example of these innovative materials. We use composites in everyday high-tech products like cars and cell phones. And as Soydan explains, they can also be key to unlocking sustainable energy solutions. Composites are extremely critical material to meet the climate change goal and the goals that we are working towards these days. In general, fiber reinforced uh, plastic composites outperform in other commercially available materials in a wide range of applications, such as in transportation, automotives, aircraft tracks, trucks, in sustainable energy, wind and hydropower, uh, in electronic laptops, handheld devices, and many others. So, recovering them, reutilizing them already is a value. And of course, uh, this is the recycling energy, this is recycling the uh, carbon dioxide into these materials. The challenge of plastic doesn't just apply to consumer products such as water bottles or grocery bag. It also extends to the high-tech composite materials that go into the high-performance plastics products such as electric vehicles, aircrafts, and wind turbine blades. 
So I would focus on challenges in front of us in the reinforced plastic composites. So how do we create solutions for what to do with these materials at the end of their life? We work very closely with industry partners and other stakeholders, other universities, research laboratories, and other stakeholders in the, in the business. So our actual business based on collaboration and being in a challenging the difficult questions, solving the overarching goals with collaboration. Uh, since uh, 2015, I've led the composite recycling effort of Institute for Advanced Manufacturing Composite Innovation, in short, IECME. Uh, during that time frame, we worked together more than 20 industry partners across the supply chain. We built critical partnership with American Chemistry Council, American Composite Manufacturing Associations to work together on developing recycling technologies to advance the mechanical recycling, chemical recycling, and convert the recycled products into new products. They say if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. That's why we believe the best way to move forward and build a more sustainable future is through working together, like this partnership. Let's hear more about our work with Oak Ridge. So I believe uh, this is a very important topic and results will be quite impactful for the future of sustainable manufacturing in automotive industry. Currently, at the end of life, automotive composites are part of a blend that is recovered after the car is shredded. These blends of materials are landfilled because they cannot be easily separated, classified, remanufactured. As a part of the Memorandum of Understanding work with American Chemistry Council, we hope to develop end-of-life pathways for automotive shredder residue that is industry viable and create a demonstration separation technology and remanufacturing line that can be used by industrial partners to enable low-risk materials development in an industry for which this is currently not possible. To me, uh, this is a very exciting moment and opportunity to work together with ACC and their uh, member companies. For Soydon, the future is bright. And he's focused on the next generation of thinkers. I have triplets daughters, and they are well aware of uh, what's happening around the world. And they are at different generations. We, we are talking about the uh, automotive recycling and uh, with the agreement with the American Chemistry Council. I would say this, they have a different perspective than I do. Just take an example of the car. I would have a car. They don't care if they have a car or not. I care about what type of leather in this car seat. They don't mind. It's, they just uh, think that such a way that it is recyclable or biodegradable. And the things that I have not considered during my, uh, my generation, they, they are very much pay attention. So these people are going to be uh, next generation technology developers, next generation leaders, policy makers, uh, leaders in the industry. So uh, I'm really hopeful to see this upcoming generation, particularly I see uh, my kids, uh, they are giving me advice. This is, this is great to hear. And I'm very hopeful for the next generation is uh, gonna be better than us. Gina, thank you so much for joining us today on Sustainably Speaking. Thanks, Mia. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about this partnership. The work we're doing with Oak Ridge National Lab is really amazing to, to develop these like more sustainable end of life solutions. Like when a car's useful life ends, what do we do with it? So why is developing these solutions in this area so important? Well, it started as a discussion and a realization that we were seeing automakers, OEMs, and their major suppliers turning more and more towards sustainability initiatives and recognizing that we wanted to be partners in sustainability with them. We did an automotive plastic circularity roadmap, ACC, with our members and started that conversation proactively with the OEMs and said, we're here to help. We want to be part of this conversation. We want to actively engage in it and help create sustainable future for the automotive industry. As a result of that, this Oak Ridge partnership came about. We were talking to DOE, the Department of Energy, and we already had a relationship with Oak Ridge National Lab researchers through work we were doing in partnership with IACME, which is the Institute for Advanced Composite Manufacturing Innovation. 
and a recycling working group that we sat on within IACME. And we kind of started realizing there's a big opportunity here to bring in not just the traditional automotive value chain along with plastics and resin manufacturers and the plastics industry, but also for the first time, mechanical recyclers, advanced recycler, collection facilities, sorting facilities, and automotive shredders, and really look at the problem holistically with the help of the experts at Oak Ridge National Lab and with the support of the Department of Energy and their vehicle technologies office and their advanced manufacturing office, create a solution for uh, end of life and circularity for the entire auto industry, but definitely through the lens automotive plastics. And then overlay that template at the end of, say, our five-year partnership, which Soydine talks about, onto other industries. That's what we're really working toward as well. So you're saying, so like once we have these findings, you do all this research, you figure out some solutions for the plastics at the end of their usable life in an automobile, you can apply that to other applications other than automobiles. Like what? We will try to overlay it on building and construction materials, medical durable plastics, wind power, wind blades, right? Solar panels. We should be able to have a roadmap that can show these other industries, okay, this is how you can implement circularity. It also makes sense because, so for example, with the project that we're doing at Oak Ridge, we know that some of the material that we recycle will be put in, back into automotive, but not all of it. We'll be putting it into other industries as well. There's already going to be cross-application naturally, and other industries, whether it be solar, wind, um, they're going to find the same thing. They won't be able to put all their recycled content necessarily right back into their own industry, but those durable plastics will be able to go into other industries. That's amazing. Soyan mentioned some industries I hadn't even thought of, like aircraft, Mm -hmm. so aviation, Mm -hmm. uh, hydropower, Mm -hmm. laptops, tablets, smartphones. So it's really broad application. So this is the first time that we've ever really used advanced recycling for durable plastics. And at some point you have to go beyond mechanical recycling if you're going to create full circularity. And so that's why advanced recycling is going to be a big part of this and a necessary part of this. We've never really, nobody's quite done that yet for durables. So we're going to like have these findings, you know, do all this important extensive research, extend it to dozens of other industries. Why start with automotive? Largely because we got such great response from the from the automotive industry when we started that conversation about automotive plastic circularity and wanting to partner with them. It got attention. As we were talking to, at sustainability conferences and you know automotive conferences, it just became a natural a partnership kind of. And knowing that, again, it's a huge industry, right? I mean, the automotive industry is enormous. It is a big, big part of our economy in the U.S. It has a big economic footprint. We have a lot of jobs across the country in the automotive value chain. And so, you know, I think the recognition that if we solve it within the automotive context, it has a huge potential to be a solution for other industries as well and a template that other industries can follow for for durable plastics. Let's shift back because you're our expert in automotive durable plastics used in automotives and and other applications are just really essential in the fight against carbon emissions. Can you explain to our audience who maybe is not, you know, doesn't live and breathe this daily, a little bit more about how using plastics in these applications reduce carbon emissions? Mainly comes down to lightweighting. Our materials are light and strong. I mean, we have a great strength to weight ratio for durable plastics. And because of that, 
automakers have turned to our materials time and time again to lightweight vehicles. It's becoming even more important now with advanced propulsion technologies to get even more weight out of the vehicle than you did with internal combustion engine vehicles because the batteries and all of the technology that goes into advanced propulsion uh, vehicles, not to mention all of the advanced safety features, they all add weight. That automated driver assist system that your car has in order to get that great battery range, it all adds a tremendous amount of weight to the vehicle. Automakers need to more than ever before lightweight the vehicle, which of course, a lighter vehicle means less emissions. So it's a huge part in traditional and hybrid vehicles in reducing emissions. And then in addition, we're going to continue to uh, hear and be a part of with the uh, advent of electric vehicles as well and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Can you talk about the importance of private groups partnering with government groups, public-private partnerships to create solutions? It's a key component of a lot of the good work that we've done to move solutions for automotive forward. These are big challenges. So electrifying and making electric vehicles, for example, available to Americans uh, across the country. Okay, that's a big effort. And automakers can't do it by themselves. And there's a ton of work that needs to be done there. Same thing for creating sustainable end-of-life solutions for vehicles. A lot of people are worried I'm going to have electric vehicles, but does that mean we're going to have all these batteries that we eventually can't recycle? These are huge issues. The Department of Energy talks about wanting to be a partner with ACC, with the OEMs, and realizing we all have to work together to create solutions. And that's why these public-private uh, partnerships like IACME, like what we're doing at Oak Ridge, are going to be so essential if we're going to create these solutions to solve some of society's biggest challenges. End of life for vehicles is certainly one of them. Soyan spoke about this, this younger generation, how much they're taking the lead. And can you talk about that a little, Gina? Yeah, absolutely. In our uh, automotive circularity roadmap, we saw clear data that indicated that the younger generation would forego a brand name and favor a sustainable product or what they felt was a more sustainable product. The younger generation, the next generation of car buyers as well are definitely going to be, I would say, probably for the first time ever by companies that are making sustainable choices. They're going to be looking for a car that is good for the environment and that is not harming or contributing to climate change. That is definitely a great point And I think a very relevant point and something that we all need to be mindful of that things are changing and uh, the younger generation and their buying power is certainly going to be part of that. Okay, Gina. What's the most important thing our listeners should take away from our conversation? We all have to share this planet together. And I think everybody is starting to recognize we have to make positive change and better choices so that our kids and our grandkids have a better earth to inherit. And automakers recognize that. One of the things that's interesting is that they were making these commitments and recognizing sustainability was a direction that they wanted to head in uh, a long time ago. They were leaders in this space. They're making investments five and 10 years out, and they made a commitment across the board to move to a lower carbon future, to reduce emissions, to help create a positive impact on the climate. We want to um, help them create those solutions. We want to undertake a circular economy for the automotive industry with them. And we think we can solve for end of life. You know, we really feel we've got the right team in place at Oak Ridge and with the support of the Department of Energy and the automotive value chain, but also bringing in traditional recyclers as well as the advanced recyclers to solve those challenges in a way that's never been done before. Really being a pioneer here that can 
make a huge impact because there just aren't solutions available. We will hopefully be giving them that template and imagine the impact that that could have. Gina, this was awesome. Thank you for all of your insight and for joining us today on Sustainably Speaking. It was great being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks to both Soydon and Gina for talking with us. And of course, thank you, our listeners, for sustainably speaking with us today. What do you want to learn more about? Leave us a review and let us know. We'll be back in your podcast feeds with a new episode soon.